Social media is something we can't escape, and it has a big impact on everyone, but especially teens and young adults. And it seems like we're often hearing about a new study linking mental health and social media. And with a new school year underway, it's important to understand the impacts it can all have. Yes, here now with some advice and solutions on how to have a healthy use of social media. Dr. Brooke Stewart of Holistic Counseling, Acupuncture and Functional Medicine. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Ah, oh, thank you so much for having me. This is such a big issue for adults and young yeah. people. How do we approach social media you know, with a healthy mindset and, and set some parameters. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things with social media is having complete and full awareness around how we enter into it, the energy we show up, and taking full ownership. So often it's not the platforms, but the platforms can expose what patterns may already be there, what patterns that children have grown up with and been confirmed and validated by through their parents. Um, but it, I think really the way we can shift it, the beginning step is to take full ownership so we can actually change the way we re-engage with social media. Mm -hmm. So when you say take full ownership, yeah. so I pop open Instagram, I'm scrolling through, I'm seeing yeah. all these beautiful filtered people. Yes. How do I take ownership of how that's making me feel or how I use it? Absolutely. So first and foremost, empathy, right? Compassion. Like we are inundated with a fire hose of information. There are so many influencers out there. Mm -hmm. There's It's such a fake world on so many levels. But I think one of the reasons we're really having awareness around why we're going there. So by taking ownership, it means kind of like looking under the hood, right? We are so hardwired for community, for human connection. And if we're going to social media for that, we want to kind of question, okay, how are we engaging in social media? What is that energy we're bringing to it? But also, what are we getting from it? Are we using it as a mindless distraction? Is it an addiction? I mean, as you know, a culture, as human, as human beings, we mm -hmm. are so hardwired for community. Mm -hmm. So every time we look and we're scrolling kind of mindlessly, we're getting hits based on engagement, based on likes. So we have to start to begin to ask the question of, you know, how do we define our own self? worth, our own value. And in order to change the way we interact with social media, we have to change the way that and where we kind of derive value from, where we're deriving attention from, love from. And I think that really begins mm -hmm. in the home and especially going into a new school year. I think that this is an important conversation to open up dialogue around, you know? And you're also talking about, you know, finding the, the benefits out of it. Yes. So, I mean, we're talking about influencers yep. or certain people who kind of uh, those battery drainers that yes. we follow. I mean, is there maybe like a way of like following different people that would help? That's a great idea. I mean, that's the biggest thing too, being so aware of what creates distress in the system and a state of expansion, motivation, inspiration. Mm -hmm. So we, when we decide to take full ownership of how we engage in the platform, we get to choose who we follow, who we unfollow, you know, what accounts inspire us, how we respond to certain comments. For example, if there's a cyber bully or if there's something kind of going on, which of course is, is heartbreaking as a parent to see, but also as a child to experience, right? Mm -hmm. If we're able able to understand that we can own our response and have conversations, open conversations around how to do this and understand that we have a, a variety of choices of how we go about doing that. That is where things can really kind of shift and we can begin to kind of heal that relationship because social media isn't going anywhere. It's mm -hmm. only going to get bigger. We're living in a virtual world. So it's, it's definitely important to be able to talk about these, you know, important factors. What about, you know, discussing it as a family, yes. like say you have, you know, your child is on it. How can you approach it in a way that you're making sure that they're following healthy patterns with that? Absolutely. So I think just even opening up the conversation like we are here, we can do at home, we can do around the dinner table, we can do it casually. I think one of the most important things that we have to drive home for our children and even for ourselves is literally starting to redefine how we see ourselves. So are we, you know, um, is our self-worth fluctuating based on external factors like achievement, like what we do, how we look, all of these different things? Or is it based on who we are? If at home we can begin mm -hmm. to praise our children for who they are, the unique, special, important, capable, just for being themselves and showing up, that is that is is so instrumental. What about when we talked about you know waiting till they're in the mm -hmm. eighth grade to right. like even get the phone? Yes. Do you think maybe the social media shouldn't start until they're in maybe a certain grade or a certain age? 
You know, there are definitely studies that show how developmentally there is a lot of benefit to waiting to have a smartphone or waiting to really be immersed in technology. Unfortunately, in this day and age, I think it's hard to get away from mm -hmm. because children are at school, they're playing with their friends' phones, they're you know involved in all kinds of things. You can't really get away from it. So I think that's a very personal decision when it comes to the family unit mm -hmm. and you know how their unique child is going to you know what they feel like is mm -hmm. right for them and their family. Family, you know what I mean? Yeah, got to keep the lines of communication open. Absolutely. And, you know, even in elementary school, my daughter's school, they're all required yeah. to have devices. So it's yeah. not like as easy as, oh, no devices. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, just a quick mention on this. I think one of the, the things that we want to be careful of with our children is to keep them special and unique. So often, you know, when we're focused on comparing ourselves and other people, we mm -hmm. forget that we have like this unique thing that we can bring to the world. And and I see so many teenage girls in my mm. practice. And that's what I try to kind of keep that alive. It's like, you are so weird and wonderful and strange in your own like way. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. Keep that. That's special. Non-conformity. You know? yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Sure There's thing. so much information we're all just kind of just absorbing. Well, thank you so much, yeah, Brooke. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Brooke.